Hey everyone, this is Shubhi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. How are you all doing? So today's video is going to be about cost of living in Singapore and this has been the most requested video so far and there's a lot to talk about. So let's see how it goes. Well, we all know that Singapore is one of the most expensive countries in the world and it has its own reasons. But I feel if you know how to work your way around here and know when or where to spend, then it's not that bad, okay? So yeah, before I begin, please take a moment to hit like, share and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Also, there is a disclaimer for you guys that this video is going to give you a very generic idea about the cost of living in Singapore because the actual cost of living would depend on various other factors including how many members do you have, what is the size of the flat you would want to have, what is the location you would want to stay in or the facilities or amenities you would want to have and many others. So we'll try to discuss all these factors as we move ahead in the video and now let's start. Now the major portion of your expense goes for the house to live in which is the house rent. So in Singapore we have four types of rental options. Number one, dormitories. Number two, HDBs. Number three, condominiums. Number four, landed houses or landed properties. So guys, everyone income and needs are different. So you really need to know what is the right choice for you. So now if you're wondering that what are these dormitories, HDBs, condominiums and landed houses which I've just mentioned and what are the differences? For that, you need to check out two of my videos which I've already created explaining the entire rental process. So in those videos, I have explained the types of rental options in Singapore which are available and how to find the house on rent and what are the things you should keep in mind while searching the flat or the apartment. And these videos are very detailed and they are definitely going to help you understand the things better and to make the right choice. So please check it out. I will put the link in the description box. Let's start from the average cost for the cheapest rental option which are the dormitories. So they typically have around 10 to 12 beds per room and it's a shared arrangement. Uh, the cost would be around 250 to 350 Singapore dollars per person per month, depends on the type of dormitory you're choosing from. Next up is the HDB. So HDB is a public housing and I think they are the most affordable option when it comes to living comfortably. The cost will depend on various factors including if you are going for sharing or if you are renting the entire space all by yourself if the flat is furnished, semi-furnished or unfurnished and the location also matters. But on an average, a two-bedroom apartment would cost you around 1500 to 2000 Singapore dollars while a three-bedroom would cost you around 1800 to 2500 Singapore dollars. If you don't want to rent the entire apartment all by yourself, then you can always rent a single room. So there are common rooms and master bedroom. For a common room, the rent is around 600 to 800 Singapore dollars per month and for the master bedroom it is around 900 to 1200 Singapore dollars per month. Also one room can be shared by maximum two persons so you have to keep that in mind. So coming to condominiums they are relatively more expensive than HDB because of the facilities they provide including swimming pool, gym etc. Again the cost will depend on various factors let's say the number of bedrooms or the location and many more. In condos, it's very easy to find one bedroom apartments, which is not so common for HDBs. So on an average for a one bedroom apartment, it would cost you around 1500 to 1800 Singapore dollars per month. While for a two bedroom condo, it would cost you from 2200 to it can go up to 5000 as well for the high rise ones. The last one in this category are the landed houses and guys they are expensive. It ranges from 3500 Singapore dollars and it can go up to 15000 Singapore dollars. It is an individual property so it has its own pros and it depends on various factors as we have discussed for other rental options as well. The location, the bedrooms and the facilities you are choosing so yeah it, it totally depends on your choice now let's talk about the utilities which are the PUV charges that includes gas water and electricity and as we all know guys it's purely based on consumption so there is a service in Singapore known as SP services which gives you a common bill for all these three and you can pay all at once so for gas you can opt for either gas pipeline or gas cylinder and the gas cylinder would typically cost you around $36 for 12.7 kgs. So coming to the utility charges, for a two bedroom apartment on an average, it would cost you around 150 to 250 Singapore dollars per month in total, including gas, water and electricity. 
and along with this as a part of house maintenance you need to get the aircon cleaning done once every 3 months which is once a quarter and it would cost you around 75 singapore dollars to 100 singapore dollars per service not per month now let's jump into communication option which is the mobile and the internet very important so we have multiple companies in singapore including singtel starhub m1 and many more so i will first talk about the mobile so mobile have two plans one is the contract the other one is the sim only sim only includes prepaid and postpaid and i personally feel that the contract plans are little expensive than the sim only plans either you go for a prepaid plan or a postpaid on an average per month if you go for a sim only plan it would cost you around 20 to 35 singapore dollars that will include some minutes and internet and also please take a note that in singapore incoming calls are charged for the prepaid sim cards so whenever you are signing up for a prepaid package please look for the one which are providing you free incoming calls now let's talk about the wifi or the broadband internet connection um i am currently using a fiber optic connection and there are two ways to go about it either you can go for a contract plan or you can sign up for a monthly plan but especially in broadband the monthly plans are little expensive and the contracts are cheaper so usually people go by the contracts and on an average it will cost you around 30 to 50 singapore dollars per month if you go by the contract now if you want to take a tv channel subscription along with your broadband then there are several combo packages available and you can opt any of those as per your need it ranges from 75 singapore dollars to 100 plus singapore dollars depends on the type of subscription you have taken now let's talk about food and food expense in singapore but before i begin you guys i just want to share one thing that this place is a big thumbs up when it comes to its food culture i mean people are so passionate about food here and you can find all kind of food from all over the world i mean it's not just limited to asian cuisine so yeah now let's come back to the point about the food expense so there can be two cases if you are cooking at home or if you are eating outside let's say if you are cooking at home then there can be three sources where you can get your groceries from one is the wet market two is the supermarkets or the stores number three are the online delivery services so now let's talk about the wet market so they are not fancy guys like supermarkets but they are the most affordable option when it comes to your daily grocery needs and shopping you can find all sorts of fresh green vegetables fruits and especially the meat and it's quite common here in singapore to buy stuff from wet market The next one are the small Indian and Chinese stores in your neighborhood. So they are the smaller stores but they are pretty sufficient for all your essential needs. So whenever you are running out of stuff you can just easily go and grab stuff from there and it's pretty accessible. It's not like that you will find all sorts of varieties but all the essential items whenever there is an urgent need you can just go and grab stuff from there. Then we have budget supermarkets like FairPrice, Giant, Sheng Siong. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Let me know. So they are pretty common here and they are the bigger supermarkets which has all sorts of varieties and they are fairly decent in price i mean they are not overly priced here after these we have premium supermarkets or premium stores like cold storage marketplace etc and they are called premium for a reason they are expensive guys and they have a good mix of all sorts of foreign and local imports so if you are craving for some specific item from your home country then you can find that in these stores now the last one in this category is the biggest supermarket in singapore which is the mustafa center and it's huge it's not just a supermarket you guys it's actually a mall so you can find all sorts of groceries including all indian groceries and products so they have departments for everything at different levels you know it's a multi story building so you can find stuff related to food to clothes to electronics to jewelry to pharmacy and what not so you will find everything in there and it's actually a tourist attraction and it's open 24 by 7 so let me know if you want to see a full video or a full tour of mustafa center now since that's out of the way you can also order your groceries online from different websites available including redmart wongo etc so wongo is specifically for indian grocery shopping while redmart is for otherwise coming to the food expense uh, the cost of your groceries would actually depend on where are you buying your groceries from okay so the food expense on an average if you are cooking at home 
for two person would be around 600 to 800 Singapore dollars and it can also go up to 1000 Singapore dollars depends on the choice of your groceries. Now coming to eating out option or getting food from outside, I am so excited just by the name of it. Anyway, so you have hawker centers, you can dine out or you can get your food delivery. So these are the three options. So let's talk about the hawker centers first. So they are the most affordable options which provides very good quality of food and it's very cheap. So most of the Singaporeans, they rely on hawker centers on daily basis for all their meals. Um, for a breakfast, I would say it costs you around 2 to 3 dollars per person while for lunch it would cost you around four to six singapore dollars uh, for one person and you can actually get a very good feast meal in that while for dinner again it's the same four to six singapore dollars for one person next ones are the mid-range and high-end restaurants so for the mid-range one it would cost you around 25 to 30 dollars i mean singapore dollars for one person while for two it would be around 50 to 60 singapore dollars Coming to the high-end ones, they are expensive and they are almost double the price, I mean at the minimum. <laughs> so it starts from $100 to $150 for two persons and it can go up to much more. 